What does it mean to give 100% effort on something? Is it possible to say with absolute certainty that you couldn't have done better? How do you know that you couldn't have run one second faster, done one more rep, scored one point higher? How do you know that there wasn't more in you to give? In terms of human potential, there's no such thing as a limit. It's a fabricated, completely negative, debilitating idea. So why? Why in a million years would you put obstacles in front of yourself that aren't there? In reality, you can always be one step better, one step further than you are now. That's a fact. And simply knowing that knocks down walls. It opens doors for you to make moves, to progress. Warren Buffett has a great quote on maximizing effort. He's speaking from a business standpoint, and he says the one thing that is absolutely sure to kill a business is complacency. Being comfortable with where you are, thinking that your current effort is sufficient, that it's enough. It isn't. And if you get comfortable, someone willing to pay a steeper price will come along and take what's yours. And there is always someone working hard to do just that. When you think about your dreams, what you're striving toward, I'm sure you have some plan, some routine, day in, day out to get there, to make it happen. Maybe you're moving forward, maybe you're in a rough spot. But regardless of your situation, there are positively untapped opportunities to move quicker, to be better. And these opportunities, they just sit there. And they'll sit there for an eternity if you don't recognize them and utilize them. I'll use the example of an athlete. When you break it down, an athlete's work is comprised of physical training, you have the mental component, their diet. And to say you want to be the best is one thing, but if you can't strip down your goal into these simple components and ask yourself, how can I be a little better in each area? You know, you won't grow to the level you're capable of. You won't be the elite athlete. You're missing the key ingredients to success. Even sitting on the couch, watching TV, You know, it's a normal thing, we all do it, you unwind, you relax for a few minutes. But think about taking that half hour and reallocating it. And instead sending three emails to people, you know, who have been successful in your field, whether you know them or not. You know, who have done what you're trying to do. See if you can connect, have a valuable conversation. Maybe it results in nothing. Maybe it creates a relationship that changes your life. Who knows? but I can tell you for damn sure that the TV will not do that. And this is an arbitrary example, but I think it's an important one because it shows that if you truly want something, you'll use every opportunity to get better, even the little ones, because every second is a game changer. Always be asking yourself, what can you be doing differently? What can you be doing better? Never be content with where you are. Be analytical. Be searching for the next step because there is always a next step. And realizing this is just the beginning. So you're stepping onto a rocket ship, leaving planet Earth, and you have one message to give to the world before you take off. What is it? For me, it's an easy one. It's that life is not as serious as we make it out to be. It's the most important thing I've learned. And perhaps the simplicity of that message might make people Uh, a little uneasy or take them by surprise, right? How exactly is it helpful? Well, I'll explain, right? Waking up every day is not an obligation or requirement. It's not another test or, or make or break audition to impress those around you. It's a gift. It's a challenge. It's something to be 
explored. If the odds of being alive, living, breathing, are one in 400 trillion, you've won. You have, as you sit or stand right now, already done the miraculous. So why not cash in? Why not live, push boundaries? To live scared, to play safe or do nothing with your life is like winning the lottery and keeping that bag full of cash under your bed for the rest of your life because you're scared of what could happen to it. It defeats the purpose entirely. And I'm not exaggerating, this mentality has changed my life. If I lose, who cares? If people laugh, who cares? If I have to swallow my pride and be broke for a few years, who cares? If I'm the unsure one, the one who doesn't know what the immediate future looks like, fine, who cares? I'll take the upside. I'll take the fun, the hard work, and the adventure. I talk about this all the time, I'll never forget. Walking into this bar with my friends six years ago now, I just left my job, right? and I remember I'm, I'm talking to this girl at the bar, story time here, and uh, she asks me what I do for a living, right? because of course she does. And you know, I tell her I just left my job, I got this really cool idea for a YouTube channel, I think it's gonna be incredible, and I, I'll never forget how fast that convo shut down. Right? Blink, and she'd walked away, and I thought, you know what, this is perfect. I'm gonna remember this probably for the rest of my life. Why? Because it's a symbol it's a sign that the immediate is what stops us from the best things down the road. Leaving my job, as, as hard as that maybe one or two year stretch was, was the best thing I've ever done. I am living exponentially better than I was before I had the courage to make that move. See, if life is about not screwing up, then yes. I'm still in that cubicle getting yelled at for including too much color in my PowerPoint presentations, but that's not what life is. Life is opportunity, not hiding so that you don't lose. No, it's about making something where you are with what you have. And my friends, there is so much out there. There is a win on the other side of every door you walk through, even when it's hard to see. Right now is a perfect time to be talking about this. A little crazy coronavirus has people being quarantined, everyone freaking out. Guys, take a step back and find the opportunity. I just read the other day, Shakespeare wrote King Lear when he was being quarantined because of the plague. There is always a win. Use the time, find solutions. Maybe you've always wanted to start a business. Great, take a small step, create the business page on Facebook, do something small, get the ball rolling. See, when life is a game, you're finding ways to win. Why do all these entrepreneurs talk about the hardship they've encountered before they found success? because they knew that losses wouldn't define them. But in life, just like in a game, you win and you lose. But what happens is, through repetition, you get better and better, and the wins start accumulating, becoming more substantial and consistent. See, most decisions, and let's say worst case scenario, you take the leap and things implode. Let's just be dramatic for a second. Everything goes wrong, loss, 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 loss. The reality is, 99% of your decisions, they're reversible. If you don't get the intended result, you can backpedal and adjust. You know what's irreversible though? Inaction. You know what you can't improve upon? Steps you've never taken. You can't be propelled by dreams that are hanging out in your head. Living scared is looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I hope nothing goes wrong today. Living fully is looking in the mirror and saying, I'm going to make something significant today. I'm going to take risks. I'm going to find solutions. I'm going to propel myself forward. So that, as I make my way onto this rocket ship, would be my message. Stop playing to avoid losing and start playing to win. Life is not serious. It's not a standardized test. It's a blank page waiting for a story. And stories are written by the bold, the risk takers, the ones who stop wishing and go out and make things happen. Wrong actions can be corrected, improved upon, but life through a lens of scarcity is a sealed fate. So how about living like this is the only life you have? Like each day is a metaphorical currency that you can't take with you to your grave. It must be spent, it must be cherished and utilized fully. 
So here's to not only dreaming, but finding the courage to delve headfirst into a journey so great that no stone is left unturned. No day is without the magic of your creation. Because if life is serious, it is a serious opportunity to live fully and nothing less. Life is the manifestation of stories. Stories we tell ourselves about the world and our place within it. Rules that we've constructed and we respect, we adhere to. They dictate the outcomes we get, they become our reality. Because to establish a parameter means at some point there's a line that we don't cross, right? And there are obvious lines that we point to and we say, no thanks. For example, our, our values, right? I won't do X because, well, it will hurt someone I love. Or legal parameters, I won't do Y because I know the repercussions are too much. It's not in my self-interest. And these are obvious, these are talked about. We're aware of these stopping points. But I wanna talk about a different set of rules. The stories we're writing without realizing we're doing it. How we think we're running a sprint, but have no idea that there's heavy weight on our shoulders holding us down and you can't take that weight off if you don't know it's there. And this all came to me a few months ago. I was in LA for the weekend, having lunch with some incredible entrepreneurs. They've done some amazing things. One of them sold a dating app for hundreds of millions of dollars, another one a healthcare company, another one had a very successful food distributing business, and I'm sitting there kind of blown away. And my priority was to listen, not run my mouth or fabricate or impress, but to simply observe what creates this type of result. I was listening to, to Alex Mayer, who created Zeus, uh, talk about his upbringing. Right? He came to the US as an immigrant from Iran and worked his way up from nothing. It's not like these folks were given the world, they took it. And it took me about three minutes to find a commonality in their worldview. To me, it couldn't be more evident. It was impossible to miss. They don't look at life how I do, or at least how I did. See, the story I told revolved around my parameters. Sure, I had moments of boldness, I pushed myself, I worked hard, but I looked at life in terms of what it would allow. Here's how things are. Okay, how can I stretch that? But that's like repainting or adding on to a house that was already built, right? There's only so much flexibility, so much you can do with that. But these guys are going around the table talking like little kids on Christmas, right? Talking about life like it's a game talking about opportunity like it's an apple waiting to be picked from a tree right outside. There was no, what will the world allow? It was with a smile, anticipation, and self-belief, what can I make? And Alex, who I mentioned earlier, sold Zeus, right? created Mentor Box, and he, he loves beef, eats it all the time, right? And so it's become his next entrepreneurial venture, a healthy beef stick company. And every thought seems to revolve around that. How can he take something he loves and share it with the world? His imagination is now driving his thought process, which drives his action. Not parameters, not someone else's reality, but possibility. See, I left the table with this feeling I've never really had before. It's like someone tapped me on the shoulder and reminded me of the freedom contained in every single step. And not flexibility, but freedom like a weight had been lifted off of my shoulders. 
Who cares if you mess up? Who cares if you lose? Who cares? That's part of this game we're playing. A game where reality isn't an obligation to be lived, it's an opportunity to be explored. It's not about what you don't have. It's being grateful for everything that brought you to right now. Because right now is a perpetual launching pad. You know, growth is learning. And that afternoon, I learned to take life way less seriously. To enjoy it. To let imagination drive every step. Because the difference is some of us build because we don't want to lose. We don't want to succumb to fear and not meeting our potential, right? We fear being inadequate, falling short. We see obstacles. Some of us, we build to capture the beauty, the excitement. That makes the difference. And look, I'm not presenting you empirical data. I don't have all the answers, but I'm willing to bet that years from now, looking back, that simple understanding will have played a substantial role in whatever comes next. The rules changed, and so did the path. Let's not become so focused on each footstep that we lose sight of where they're collectively taking us. What are you building? Why are you here? To play by someone else's rules or to transform yourself and by default the world around you. See, reality is fluid. It's malleable. And the beauty is in that process of creating a ship leaving the harbor has infinite possibility unlimited potential and that gives it its power there's no right turn or wrong turn the only way to lose is to stand still to think that horizon in the distance is too far or not for you see a harbor is not a stopping point it's a beginning so take control over that world push it Test it, see what it has to offer, throw your interests and your curiosities against the wall. See what sticks, see what ignites your soul. Test the universe because life, it rewards the bold. Those courageous enough to step outside their front door and not follow but design those who know things are the way they are simply because others before them had the courage to make it so well now it's your turn you defeated the one in 400 trillion odds stacked against your birth you navigated through your low points you've done enough to get to this very moment this instant for the mistakes that brought you here will become the wisdom that leads you forward. That takes you to places you never thought possible. And where exactly that is, is entirely up to you. But like I said upstairs, it's been an amazing trip. So last day and uh, gonna make it count. There have been times in my life when I've been down. I've been out, I've been afraid. I've looked up at the road ahead and been completely unsure. And I can say firsthand when you're going through a situation like this, that uh, it essentially consumes you, right? It's all you see, it's all you think about to the point where the good stuff the opportunity all around you, it becomes transparent. You see right through it. 
It's the negative, it's misfortune for a period of time that becomes your narrative, becomes the story. What if this is forever? What if I'm not as good as I want to be or as they are? What if things don't work out? Never mind the fact that you've been here before and you've battled back. Never mind how far you've come. No, that takes a back seat to the discomfort that we feel right now. And that's the irrationality of the human mind we forget. We forget that the lows create the highs. That temporary isn't forever, that you can't stand with any type of authority if you've never before fallen. Accomplishing anything is never just walking up and reaching a goal. It's about getting back up over and over again taking the bad breaks in stride and seeing the losses for what they are necessary. What if I told you that the difficult times weren't just manageable, they were what you needed? Those moments when you felt helpless were a bridge to something better, a demonstration of just how capable you are and how strong you can be. Feeling lost, feeling defeated, sure, it's unsettling. But it's also a reminder that you are exactly where you need to be. In one form or another, your struggle becomes your answer. Life isn't always calm seas and sunny skies, but if you let it, it will teach you to weather any storm to come out on top. Never lose sight of the opportunity, it's there. Hiding behind the struggle, immersed in the ups and downs, and when you know that you will not let yourself stay down, that you'll get up. Struggle becomes a building block, not a weight around the ankles. With each stumble, you become taller. With each misstep, you step forward. The problem will never be tough times. It will be refusing to find that next level for fear of their materialization. Regret is a choice. And for those who refuse to stay down, it will be a choice that they'll never know. Be loved or be hated, but never simply tolerated. In life, you can live to chase opportunity, or you can live to avoid failure. And there are two very different things. Rather than pursue, we often avoid. We avoid failure. We avoid criticism. We don't want to ruffle feathers or disrupt. No, we choose to simply exist. Never condemned, but never extraordinary. Just tolerate it. And it's an interesting dilemma. Because the best things exist on the extremes. Life's fringes. That's where you find your accolades, your accomplishments. That's what we celebrate. It's where you need to be. And you get there not by worrying about what everyone around you thinks, but by taking your strength, your unique self, holding on and pressing the pedal to the floor, going all in. And yeah, that means suddenly, my friend, you are ex. Boast. You are vulnerable. You are now out there. It means those who don't have the courage to chase their dreams, they will find you threatening and they will let you know. But it also means that the shackles are off. The door is open. The light is green and you can 
build from the ground up, you can build the life you want. The finish line has now become more visible than the prospect of falling along the way, and you've granted yourself permission to run through it. Sure, some will love you for these accomplishments, some will hate you for these accomplishments, but let me reiterate the word accomplishment. Because when you live to be invisible, it's a term that rarely presents itself, I promise. Life, it rewards the bold. Those who are bold in their beliefs, bold in their actions, their dreams, and their pursuits, they are not for anyone but you. And years later, when you look in the mirror, you'll know that you gave every single thing you had to a life that meant something to you. Loved, yes. Hated, sure. But merely tolerated, no. There's a saying that just because you spent a long time making a mistake doesn't mean you need to continue making it. There's an incredible advantage in life for those who can separate past and future, who can recognize sunk costs and walk away, walk away from the past, move on to new things. But here's the challenge, right? Like so many things, our instinct is to preserve. It's, yeah, but I've invested so many years. I've spent X amount of dollars and maybe I don't like where I'm at, but look how long it's taken me to get here. Well, here's the reality, that time is gone. That money is not coming back no matter what you do or what direction you take from here on out. There's no reason to think you have to maintain the same trajectory or hold on to a specific identity or pattern of behavior. Yesterday isn't the focal point here. The goal is simpler. What matters now and how will you get there now? You've grown, you've evolved, you've changed and your targets have shifted. So why shouldn't you? The idea of sunk costs is so important because it's essentially realizing that you're not indebted to the resources you've spent or exhausted. There's no need to be a slave to previous decisions that you've made. No, just chalk it up as an integral step in your learning process, an aspect of growth, and move forward to what matters, to what you care about. And if that seems obvious, I challenge you to think about the decisions you've made over the last year, and I guarantee you, you've let factors affect your decision-making that are irrelevant to your goals. Because we feel this camaraderie with yesterday, like there's a debt to be paid, but man, life is too short to run in place. If it's not pushing you forward, drop it. If it's not what you need, forget it. In other words, don't be one of those people that wakes up and makes the same mistake every single day because you've spent a long time making it. See, reality only exists in your head, and that's why it's beautiful. You can unlock the cell door and walk out. Don't lose sight of the greatest gift you have, the new beginning that lives in every single second where you can take a turn you've never taken before, remove the mask and play a role you've never played. Let that sense of excitement pull you to new things. Let go of what you can't change and pursue what you can. Forget the time spent. Think of now. Where can you invest now? Your surroundings didn't magically arrive. You chose them and you can just as easily take that wheel and leave. Simple formula. What is best for you and how do you get there? Not where you feel obligated to be or expected to be or pressured to be. Where do you need to be? Everything else is noise. 
Everything else is a rope keeping your ship on shore, and you are not confined to that harbor or yesterday's destination. You're built to chase the horizon, follow your curiosity into the sunset. You don't make decisions based on yesterday's story. You sculpt it with tomorrow's possibility. I want to talk about a myth. And it's, it's a myth, it's an idea that's commonplace in our lives and it's rooted in a lot of the decisions we make as well as the actions that we do not take. And it's this idea of certainty, of a formula, something that's already out there that will get you from point A to point B. See, breaking it down further, there are two things you need to know about certainty. One is that it's an idea derived from fiction. There's no way of knowing exactly what the top of the mountain will look like. And waiting for that to materialize, to have that crystal clear step-by-step -step formula, it creates stagnation. We don't have perfection, so we don't move. It's one of those things where you wait and days turn to days and more days and weeks and months and years and eventually regret. Why? Because we were not certain. And what do we do? See, this leads to the second piece. We study everything. Right? We live in a time where we have access to unlimited resources. And it's this incredible thing, right? We can study the, the, the LeBron James, the Jeff Bezos, the Gary Vaynerchuks of the world. We can see exactly what they did. We can see how they think, how they approach problems, how they get to solutions. And on one hand, it's an unbelievable benefit. Knowledge is power. But on the other hand, there's a cost. And this cost can be extremely detrimental because it mitigates the most important thing in your life, and that is your unique self. What makes you valuable? What do you bring to the world? What makes you tick? And I'll tell you right now, you do not find that by studying how Jeff Bezos started Amazon and attempting to duplicate it. You don't find that by simply copying LeBron James' workout routine. Your value, your source of happiness, you know, that's discovered moving forward through ups and downs, falling and getting back up, not once, not twice, but repeatedly. And it's through those trials and tribulations that you carve out who you are. But if you wait for the perfect moment, you'll never find it, which means you will never go through this process. I often think back to my days in the corporate world, in the insurance industry, being in a situation that I was not thriving in. And if someone sat me down and said, Eddie, what do you want to do? What is the top of the mountain? What does success look like to you? I couldn't answer that. But what I did know was that I loved to create. I loved to speak, to write, compose music, produce videos, just put out content. That's what I was destined to do and I knew it. But if I waited to move until I knew exactly what my life would look like, until there was, you know, this path perfectly paved to the finish line, I'd still be there. I'd be in a, a, a cubicle crunching numbers in Excel in a weirdly painted beige room. But sometimes you have to move forward. Trust your gut, your instincts, what you love to do. Embrace the idea, the fact that you'll fall down and you'll fall down and you'll get back up, but that it will shape you. And that as you go on living your passion, your purpose, thriving in life, the pieces come together. You have to trust that even when it's not certain, because I'll tell you what is certain. 
If you do not move, you will not achieve. That world will spin right around you. I read a book a few months ago called Hatching Twitter. Simple read. It's about the founders of Twitter, Jack. I have all these guys with their different ideas and different, you know, notions of, of, of what this company is going to be. You know, it started out as, I believe, a radio, online radio company, and it evolved and it evolved, and there were pivots and adjustments and alterations, and they kept moving forward and they kept growing. And there's one point where they have a valuation of millions and millions of dollars, and they're having a conversation like, "What do we? Have? What is our company?" Is, is real-time news the focus? Are we promoting social interaction? Like, what is it? How do we brand this? How do we market it? What do we have on our hands? This is a company worth millions of dollars. Talk about just moving forward, taking it one step at a time. Things will change, they'll evolve, but you have to give yourself an opportunity for that to happen. Imagine if they never left the garage or whatever room they started the company in because they didn't know what it would be in 2017. We wouldn't have Twitter. And that applies to everything around us, right? We have this idea that, you know, things were meant to be, they were destined. No. Things exist around us because of risks that were taken. Because people pushed forward until they got a result, until they knew what they were meant to do and it materialized. And that is life. So don't be scared to take that step. Don't be nervous to fall down. You need that. The world needs that because without it, we'll have could be's and some days, but not the existence that we want, that you deserve, that you're capable of acquiring. No longer is certainty the standard. Progress is the standard, and your life will change. In a limitless world, why set your sights on the obtainable, the prize within an arm's reach? Why not think bigger? Our expectations are the foundation for our accomplishments. The target you aim for is more than likely going to be the target you hit, which means it's quite possible to do exactly what you set out to do and still drastically underachieve for the sole reason that you are worth more. You are capable of more than you give yourself credit for, but like anything, if you don't recognize and do something about it, the impact will be minimal. It doesn't matter that you're the fastest person in the world if you never sprint. It's impossible to stumble into excellence because to get there, you need to one, understand that something greater exists and two, understand that you are worthy of it. In anything you do, it's better to aim high, to try and accomplish too much, be bigger than reality, larger than life. And what you'll find in maintaining these monumental expectations is that you grow along with them. You realize that what was acceptable yesterday is no longer good enough, that it was merely a stepping stone. The things you're capable of, the life that's possible for you is unfathomable to the human mind. Endless opportunities are not black and white. They're not reassuring because they haven't happened yet. They're not visible or tangible, but that's okay. Just know that no matter where you are or what you want, more exists. If you're willing to go to another level, there is something bigger, period. So take a look at the targets that you've set. Don't waste time asking yourself whether there's something greater there is. 
Ask yourself if you're willing to step up, to move outside your comfort zone and get it.